Thank you for joining us for worship today at CCSC. Normally, we would spend the next few moments in confession of sin, but I'd like to read a statement of grief for the massacres in Atlanta, Georgia and Boulder, Colorado. The first half of this statement I'm indebted to, and it was written by amazing Asian American sisters at the Sola Network, whose experience and trauma and horror land uniquely land in unique ways of their own. I've added some additional thoughts in the second half for CCSC and for all those listening in today so that you can join me in an outpouring of grief. It is vitally necessary to outpour our grief in every other painful emotion before God in prayer, as well as I would ask for prayer for those of traumatized, those who are the, of the loved ones who are mourning, and as well as a brief call for collective action. For now, we keep the names of victims in Atlanta on March 16th, private out of respect for some of their family's wishes, as their consent has not been verified. This does not mean they are nameless individuals without families and loved ones and stories of their own. We grieve and condemn this massacre in Atlanta, which happened amidst the rise of anti-Asian sentiment rhetoric and, and attacks across this country. From March 2020 to February 2021, almost 3,800 hate crimes, that's about more than 10 per day, against Asian Americans were committed. And these are the ones that were reported. We grieve the minimization, denial, fears and frustrations, injustices and pain that Asian Americans feel being treated as the perpetual foreigner. So often asked, where are you really from? While carrying on the model minority myth, which suggests you should just keep your head down and overcompensate until you make it in this land of promises and dreams. But we have found that brings neither justice nor peace for all. The church, this church, the church I love and the church I belong to, Grieves that someone raised and discipled in a church targeted and scapegoated women in Asian-run locations for his own temptations and demons. I particularly grieve how the name and the witness of Christianity has yet again been grossly misrepresented. You know, my non-believing friends used to think that they were not good enough for the church Seems to me now non-believers feel the church is not good enough for them. The church of Jesus Christ realizes and grieves multi-layered manifestations of sin exposed, including misogyny and racism. For those who continue to say, I don't see race, I don't see color, I have friends of many different races. I would like you to just suggest to you, please consider, you can only say that because you probably haven't suffered because of your color. For those sick and tired of the topics of race or the gender wars, gender debates, I assure you there is nobody more sick and tired and exhausted and dying because of their gender and race. We grieve and hate the tragic loss of all of life, God's own masterpiece. And this week, while reeling, even beginning to process the massacre that happened in Atlanta, the community of Boulder, Colorado, was struck by unspeakable violence, putting an end to 10 more innocent lives. Oh, please do honor, uphold, and pray for the mourning families of first responders 
who lost an officer running into the line of fire in Boulder. Pour yourself with me into prayer to process every difficult and complicated emotion before God. Mine happens to be these days, unusually, anger. For Psalm 88 teaches us to do this. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you, for my soul is full of troubles. On a practical note, calling us to collective action, weep with those who weep, join anti-hate campaigns, give toward, serve and protect the most vulnerable in our society. Pray for and pursue justice would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And confess and pray with me this day for the church who can and must do better in following Jesus. Because the Jesus who is revealed and the Jesus we are getting to know better, he listens and he laments. He takes the blame. His love bleeds out. He sacrifices himself in no-win situations. Jesus laid down his life to fulfill John chapter 12, verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. I'm sorry to so, so sorry for those who are suffering and mourning over and over and over again. And I'm so sorry that I probably haven't taught and modeled this well. The way of Jesus, the way of Jesus, and there's no better way out of this, is for Christians to die or other people are just going to keep dying. For my Asian sisters, daughters, and mothers, the church cannot do better without you. Please don't give up on the church. The church is a broken and poor reflection. We don't play Mozart well, but never do doubt Mozart is a beautiful genius. And we're not going to play it any better without you. Because there's so many other ways that I simply know and have received, even here at this church, that without my fellow sisters, I don't know where we could go from here. So please join me. Please help me. Please come alongside me. Please pour out your tears and your grief and anger with me. And pray. And let's act. Let's act in Jesus' name. Would you pray with me in these moments? Father God, so we pray you would take these broken hearts and make them more like yours. Oh Lord, we pray for comfort. We pray for hope. We pray for healing upon a most broken, hurting world in Atlanta, in Boulder, and right here in California. We confess and grieve and pray that we would follow you better. Make us more like you who laid down his life so people could live. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.